tier lists have been a staple of YouTube for a few years now. At this point, you can find a ranking of just about anything. TierZoo was the first channel I saw to combine the format with science and learning, but it's already spread into physics and maths as well. For example, Andrew Dotson recently did a ranking of his favourite physics equations. Today, I thought it would be time to create an ultimate mathematical shapes tier list. I've got a non-rigorous point system to give each shape a fair chance at that coveted S tier position. So each object will be judged on symmetry, singularities, the significance in other disciplines outside of mathematics, how difficult it is to define or create, and the aesthetics. For aesthetics, we're really asking, does this shape deserve its own mood board on Pinterest? Now that's of course going to be subjective, but it's worth including aesthetics as a criteria because it's kind of important to math. The beauty of the shape may indicate that we've got some kind of elegant solution, or at least to help inspire interest in the topic. So let's start with a nice simple shape, the common sphere. I'll be using the software Surfer to model some of these shapes. This algebraic surface is as old as it gets. It is perfectly symmetric, which makes it awesome to work with, but at the same time it might be a bit boring and uninspiring because it looks the same in all directions. However, this hasn't stopped the sphere from becoming a major player in other disciplines. You see it in art and sports and engineering all the time, and even in astrophysics for things like planets and even black holes. Spheres are very effective for modeling all sorts of things, probably because the sphere is very easy to understand. Aesthetics wise, the sphere might not be the most interesting shape, but because of its heroic performance in all sorts of disciplines and how easy it is to construct, I think that B tier is more than deserved. Next up is another classic, the Mobius Strip. It's a two-dimensional object with only one side and one edge that can be embedded in a three-dimensional space. There are no notable things to say about its symmetry or singularities, but just like with the sphere, where the Mobius strip shines is in its applications to other disciplines. Surprisingly, there are actually some applications of this strange little shape. One of them is that in the days of industrialization, a lot of factories had one central engine to provide rotational energy to operate all of the machines. A common thing was to use flat leather belts to transmit this central power, some were instead given a half twist before joining the ends, and this would allow for the wear to be evenly distributed over both sides of the belt. You can make a Mobius strip pretty easily yourself. Just take a long piece of paper, give it a twist, and glue the ends together. If you start at any point and draw along the strip, you end up where you started. In mathematics, we call a shape with a property like this non-orientable. Since you can't really define an up or a down on a surface like this, I think the simplicity of being able to create such an interesting shape makes it very intriguing and worthy of an A tier spot. Now this next crazy critter is the bath sextic, which I recently made an entire video about. It's going to belong in S tier because it's got very interesting symmetry, record-breaking singularities, and an intriguing history. It is one of the world record surfaces since it holds the record for having the largest number of singularities for a polynomial of degree 6. That record that it holds is 65 singularities, and it was proven that it can never be beaten, that 66 singularities isn't possible. Now, there are some other members of the World Record squad, and they ought to join it in here as well. So, we have the Togliatti Quintic, which holds the record for a polynomial of degree 5, and that record is 31 singularities. I think they belong one tier below the Bath Sextic, since their record is for a lower degree. Then likewise, we have the Cumor Aquatic, which holds the record for a polynomial of degree 4, and that record it holds is 16 singularities. I'll put that one in B tier, and then we'll have the Cayley Cubic, 
another world record surface, this time of degree 3, coming in with four singularities and getting placed in C tier. The next one is also a record holder, it's the double cone coming in with one singularity for a degree 2. I talk about this one a bit as well in my video about the bath sextic. You can really see that prominent singularity in the middle of the shape. This shape is also quite interesting in special relativity in physics, as you might have seen it in something called a light cone. It shows the causal future and the past. You can think of the singularity in the middle as an event in space-time, and all other events inside the double cone can have a causal relationship with that first event. Everything outside the cone would be too far away to have any impact or to be impacted by the original event in space-time. And this angle of the cone is governed by the speed of light. That's a very interesting application, but because the record this one holds is not as impressive as some of the other records we've seen, it's going to sit in C tier for now. I've got two more shapes to quickly mention here, which also currently hold world records, but perhaps not for long. These are the Lab Septic and the Endras Optic. These currently hold records for 7th and 8th degree polynomials, although these records haven't been proven to be unbeatable in the way that our other record holders were. For the Bath Sextic, we've proven that you can never have more than 65 singularities, but here for this septic and this optic, it's very feasible that someone might be able to find a shape which will beat it. For that reason, they're both going to be banished to D tier. Let's see what we can do next. Uh, we have Gauss's bell surface. The surface might look unspectacular at first since there are no interesting points that really stand out, no singularities, but don't underestimate this gem of mathematics. It is used all the time in statistics and is the foundation of the normal distribution. Furthermore, what's very interesting is that the formula defining this surface shows a really nice connection between the fundamental constants pi and e. This one's difficult to rank because the aesthetics are lacking a bit and the competition is harsh, but we'll place them here in C tier. Next up, we can do the torus, or you might like to call it a donut. It is a rotational symmetric shape of genus 1, since it has one hole. And this shape is often brought up when talking about the topic of topology. Everything with one hole is said to be topologically equivalent to a torus. And a classic example is a coffee mug with a handle or a drinking straw. Of course, its applications are very wide, from hair ties to rings to edible donuts or even pool toys. It has vast applications, and because of that, we're going to put it in B tier. Next, we have a shape which is a close relative of one that we've already seen. This is the Klein bottle, and it's very similar to the Mobius strip, since both surfaces are non-orientable. The Klein bottle also has only one surface, but unlike the strip, the two-dimensional bottle can't be embedded in three dimensions. It always looks like it intersects itself, when in reality it doesn't. You might have noticed this shape in my profile picture here on YouTube. The beanie that I wear is actually a Klein bottle hat that I made by knitting it, although of course it's not an accurate um, Klein bottle since that can't exist in 3D. If you see the way it intersects, that wouldn't happen if we had the luxury of a fourth spatial dimension. Unfortunately, making nice hats and glass bottles might be the limit of applications that I know about for the Klein bottle to the world outside mathematics, but the Klein bottle definitely deserves to be ranked alongside the Mobius strip up here in A tier, especially because if you actually were to split a Klein bottle in half, what you would have would be two Mobius strips. This little twisty boy is called the trefoil knot, and it does seem to be the poster child for knot theory. It is named after the three-leaf clover, the trefoil plant, and it has some nice triangular sort of symmetry to it. 
The knot is one continuous loop and easy enough to make yourself using a string. I also happen to have this sculpture lying around, which is another example of this kind of knot. So clearly it's going to rank pretty high on aesthetics if they're literally selling it as a decoration. I don't have a great deal of knowledge in knot theory, but apparently this is the first non-trivial knot. And one of the reasons why knot theory is so interesting is that it seems to have many applications in biology and chemistry with things like proteins and DNA that are knotted in some sense. I'm going to rank it in B tier for now. It's got some points for aesthetics, some points for a possible usefulness even though I might not totally understand how this knot is useful, um, but it is still a fairly basic shape. We're back to a heavy hitter with the next one, Flam's Paraboloid. This one's going to get ranked right up at S tier. It doesn't perhaps look that spectacular, but it is pretty cool. This shape mimics the outside of a black hole in the space-time called the Schwarzschild solution. In 1915, when Einstein published his famous field equations of general relativity, he didn't actually solve them himself. Instead, a German scientist named Karl Schwarzschild found the first interesting solution in relativity, a space-time containing a black hole. He calculated this while he was stationed in Russia during the First World War, and sadly he died not long after his groundbreaking discovery. He calculated that space-time stops behaving normal at some radius. This is the inner circle in the middle. Now we call this the event horizon. The surface shows how everything gets attracted to that circle, and what happens beyond this point is anyone's guess at the moment. It is amazing to see how clearly general relativity predicted the existence of black holes like this when no one could imagine this before. This is a cornerstone of science wrapped up in one picture, and that's why it deserves to be an S tier. Second to last here, we have the dodecahedron. Now this is supposed to represent all five of the platonic solids. We've all seen them before, and they're so iconic that they definitely deserve to be ranked here. All of these solids have some very special symmetry to them, and in fact, these solids define what symmetries other shapes can have. For example, back in my bath sextic video, it was the symmetry of the icosahedron that allowed us to get that shape. What makes the platonic solids so special is the uniqueness they have. These shapes are the only options if you want a polyhedron with identical faces and corners. And the fact that there are only five seems quite surprising. You see these shapes, of course, a lot in architecture or anywhere really throughout history. And so considering this, A tier is a fitting spot. And this list would of course not be complete without at least one fractal. I've chosen to include the Mandelbrot set. This relatively new shape finds its home in complex analysis and is known for its crazy boundary. It is one of those fractals which are inherently self-similar, meaning that you can zoom in on the border as much as you want and would always end up with the same thing on screen. There isn't too much to talk about in terms of symmetry and singularities with this one, and I'm not sure about any usefulness in other scientific fields, but it is used a lot in art, and as I'm sure you can imagine or might have seen, there are plenty of nice psychedelic-like zooming videos uh, using this shape, plenty of which you can watch here on YouTube. The construction of this shape is surprisingly simple, and I'm going to explore it using Brilliant, who are also a sponsor of this video and have been a huge supporter of my channel. I do really like their explanation and a lot of their visuals for the Mandelbrot set, so let's have a look at how they say we can define it. What you do is you start with a complex number, call it z. Then if you square that and add it to itself, look at what you end up with. Then square that and add z to that, and keep going like that forever. You'll notice that one of two things would happen. Either the magnitude explodes up towards infinity, and in that case, the complex number z is not in the Mandelbrot set. 
If the magnitude is bounded or tends towards zero, then the number z is in the Mandelbrot set. We can ask ourselves, is the complex number i in the set? Well, it is, because after the first few iterations, we would have i, then minus 1 plus i, then minus i, then back to minus 1 plus i. And this set of answers will repeat, we're in a bit of an alternating cycle. And since we're not going to end up going out to infinity, the value of i is in the Mandelbrot set, so it will be plotted somewhere on that interesting picture. Another example is the real number 1. With that we would have 1, then 2, then 5, then 26, and because each time we're squaring that answer and adding 1 to it, we're just going to keep getting larger and larger until we get to infinity. So 1 is not in the Mandelbrot set. Another couple of examples here, we have that minus 2 is in the Mandelbrot set, whilst minus 2i is not. This here is a full image of the Mandelbrot set, and you can zoom in on parts of the boundary to see its chaotic nature. The set has a main cartioid, which is this heart-shaped section here, as well as several attached bulbs. And the position of a number within either the cartioid or these numbered bulbs here tells us something about recursion or I think the fate of the number, whether it reaches an equilibrium or a fixed point. I love looking at this fractal because every piece of it is loaded with mathematical meaning. And one of the reasons it might be so appealing is because you get such a complicated surface with a relatively easy mathematical construction. To this date, there are still plenty of open questions surrounding this set, and it has led to the discovery of many equally astounding shapes, such as the Mandel Bulb or the Buddha Brot. It is pretty legendary, so I'm going to put it up in S tier. Let me know what you think of my ranking. I'm sure there will be some that you disagree with, but it's just for fun, and I'm sure there is also some interesting shapes that I've left out, because how could I include all of them in one video? but tell me some of those main ones you think should be included next time. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and if you're interested to check out their content a bit more, they have courses on mathematics, science, including physics, astronomy, computer science, biology, a lot of interesting stuff. You can head to brilliant.org slash tibbies, and that link will be down in the description. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for making these videos possible, and a special shout out to today's Patreon Cat of the Day, Maureen.